Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Shaukat. Thank you, Stan. Uh, my name is Tony Sabella, and I am going to talk about the Arabic media. I have been involved with the Arabic media for the last 35 years. Now, uh, I will try to summarize as much as possible the past, present, and future of the Arabic media. And we start by the newspapers. The first Arabic newspaper was published in 1965 by a gentleman called John Saman. At that time, that was the regular, the first regular Arabic newspaper. Before that, there were many attempts to publish uh, uh, Arabic language newspapers, but on a very uh, modest uh, basis. But this one was on a regular basis, published every Thursday. At that time, editors of newspapers would, uh, would uh, uh, wait for newspapers to arrive from uh, the Middle East so that they can uh, cut uh, some pages and paste them while the front page would be um, uh, taken from the BBC shortwave. In 1970, El Telegraph was published by a syndicate. But since this syndicate, unfortunately, uh, didn't stay for long, it ended. And out of uh, El Telegraph came out a newspaper which stand very distinctive among all Arabic newspapers in Australia. It, it's called An Nahar. It is still publishing, but it's, uh, it is published now by another, mm. news, uh, uh, by another editor because its original editor has died, passed away, Peter, the late Peter Endari. Now, Mr. Endari was a very pan-Arabic person, a journalist and a real journalist. You can say in the real sense of the word, he was a real journalist. And he was very well versed in Australian politics and in Arab politics and the Palestinian cause and all these matters. So you, he was the only Arab journalist qualified to stand up to community leaders, to stand up to Australian politicians, to stand up to anyone. And he did not mind. He didn't have fear or favor for anyone. He stood for the religious leaders. He stood against them. He criticized them. He stood against the political leaders. So for this reason, he uh, uh, earned a, a very, very good, high respect from the community. And also, he was the only Arab journalist or Arab Lebanese journalist who could uh, attract highly intellectual columnists and uh, journalists to his newspaper. Then we have also uh, Al Bayrak newspaper, and out of Al Bayrak mm. we have uh, now the future. Currently, there are also we can say there are three major Arab Lebanese or Arab newspapers in Australia. They are Al Telegraph, An Nahar, and the Future. You have also some other uh, bilingual newspapers or magazines like Middle East uh, International, like Middle East Herald, like uh, uh, Al Furat, or else. Some members of the Egyptian community also uh, published and still publish uh, newspapers. Some members of the Iraqi community publish newspapers. The Sudanese, they are still new, relatively new in the country. They don't have uh, a regular uh, newspaper yet. Now, this is a very brief about the Arabic newspapers, but let us go to the Arabic radio and talk a little bit about the Arabic radio. Now, unlike the press, where the Lebanese were the pioneers of uh, the Arabic press in Australia, the pioneers of Arabic radio in Australia are the Palestinians and Egyptians. That is something everybody would uh, recognize and would uh, understand. And actually, the first pioneer of the Arabic radio was a gentleman who passed away late last year, was called Nabil Tanous. And Mr. Tanous used to work for the ABC. And from the ABC, he moved to SBS Radio, where he uh, consolidated the Arabic program in Radio SBS. And he trained dozens of uh, uh, Arabic speaking persons to become broadcasters. And later, these broadcasters went to Excel and to have their own programs, and they have radio programs, and they have radio stations, and this and that. So that is something. Now, there's something I would like to say, sadly, and I have to say it, for uh, Middle Eastern narrow considerations, 
The Arabic newspapers, after Mr. Tanus passed away last year, they never recognized this achievement. And the due respect goes to the MLC, Mr. Shaukat Musalmani, who recognized his achievement in the state parliament. And for this, the Arabic community appreciated what Mr. Musalmani have done. Uh, because this is something, look, any person in life, we have uh, agreement and disagreement with him, especially in the media, and you know that. But when somebody passes away and he has done achievements, we have to recognize it, even if we like him or dislike him. And for this reason, Mr. Salmani has earned the high respect of the whole community. Now, also Mr. Nannos established successful radio, co-established successful radio 2000 FM, which is uh, running in several languages. Also in the 80s, there was a, an English program on 2SER FM, an English Middle Eastern English program. I was also a contributor to that program. Now besides SBS radio, we have uh, commercial radios today running 24 hours like uh, tomorrow, like uh, 2ME. Now the thing about these radio stations, they can be volatile. They can be controversial, not controversial in a way that uh, constructive. Sometimes they can be destructively controversial because they can attack other Arab communities, they can attack other uh, uh, Arab sections of the community without considerations to ethics, without considerations to uh, professionalism. So this is something we have to, uh, to, put, to put in mind. And also most announcers of these radio stations are not professional. For example, when they discuss something, uh, for example, they think sometimes they forget themselves, they think themselves they are in the Middle East, and they talk about the Australians, they are the foreigners. <laughs> the foreigners. So, I mean, that is something, it shows you, you need to be professional to have, uh, to be a broadcaster. Now, Mr. Robertson uh, said uh, just uh, two hours ago about uh, the Middle East online. Uh, it's true, that's correct, but the real professional or the real online newspaper, which is now currently running online, is Al-Ankabut. Al-Ankabut updates its pages every two, three, four, five hours. So that, was, that is the only uh, uh, news, online newspaper that is really in online. Now, the Middle East uh, online, it is online, but it is for example, it publishes <coughs> day before news or something like that. So they have to update the news. Now, what are the successes and failures of Arabic media? We have spoken, we have criticized, we, have, we were critical, but also we have to acknowledge that the Arabic media has done a lot of very good things to the country and to the community. And that's something we cannot ignore. It linked the Arabic-speaking migrants with their homeland at a time when there were no other means except perhaps the shortwave radios. It informed Arab speakers about Australian laws, life, politics, assisted Australian politicians in understanding better the Arabic community, succeeded in being the longest regular Arabic newspaper, newspapers in the diaspora. There is no other uh, country in the world except Australia that there are Arab newspapers running from 1965 until today continuously, or from the 60s, continuously. So that's something, a big achievement. It gave the Arabic migrants a forum, although constrictive in many ways because of Middle Eastern consideration and because of the right-wing nature of the newspaper, because most of uh, uh, all the publishers of newspapers come from Northern Lebanon and from a Christian background, so they are, uh, Naturally, uh, they were a little bit uh, right-wing, except Mr. Andari, who was also a, a Christian Maronite, but he was a very pan-Arabic because of his political affiliations with the Ba'ath Party of Iraq or Syria. Now, these newspapers encouraged the learning of the Arabic language among Australians of Arab and non-Arab background. Now, of course, as the community uh, grows old and there are the young uh, generations, those uh, uh, youngsters are not very much interested in Arabic newspapers, as just except if they know Arabic. But still, the Arabic newspapers have readership. 
and still you do not underestimate the power of the Arabic newspapers. The Arabic newspapers ca can be dormant for a long time, but when it explodes and becomes volatile, it becomes very dangerous. Now, for this reason, there are uh, many issues that the Arabic newspapers do not discuss. And they try as much as possible not to discuss, because if they discuss, they will have a, a very bad ramifications on the community and on the society as a whole. So in a way, they are all right. They, they can be right in some ways. In some ways, they cannot be right. Now, failures. Owners could not check up their homeland political tendencies and continue to directly and indirectly incite against their homeland political opponents. That's something very bad. They continue indirectly and directly inside. And that is causing tensions in the community. All regular Arabic Leonese newspapers, as we know, they are owned by people of right wing orientation. The renowned Egyptian journalist and author, Muhammad Hassanein Heka, once said to me on a visit to Australia in the 80s that if the Arabic press back home is like the ones you have here, we would have civil wars on a continual basis. <laughs> And he's right. Now, I know today, I know today the Arabic press is all right. It's, it's far much more better than before. You see, I am of Palestinian background. And in many, many instances, I was not allowed to say my free opinion. My, my, because we, uh, I, my uh, member of parliament, his member of parliament is his friend, or that, or that, or that. So that is something. Now, one of the biggest failures of the Arabic press in Australia and the Arabic media in general was the Lebanese gangs issue. That was the biggest failure that has touched the community. When Bob Carr, in the in late 90s or early 2000, he was the premier of New South Wales, and raised this issue and said that there were gangs, Lebanese gangs in Sydney, right? the community backed him. But the newspapers, because of some community leaders who are not very well educated, stood up against him. And that was the biggest blunder the Arabic newspaper did. Because if at that time they stood up and backed Mr. Carr, we would have a different Sydney now. <coughs> Rarely a confrontation would take place between the Arabic media and government. But if it happened, the newspaper would either be under enormous pressure from the communities, or because the government had reduced its advertising allocation, in this case, the newspaper would take the first opportunity to open fire on the government of the day. So either you will let me live, or I will fight you. Issues that were supposed to be adopted by Arab media, either they were ignored or were adopted, mostly such as the Tampa affair. Asylum seeker and detention centers. I have been visiting detention centers. I've been visiting asylum seeker, and I, if I, you know the story more than me, but the silence by the Arab media on detention center centers was due to the warm relations between the former immigration minister Philip Rado and publishers of Arabic newspaper, as well as leaders of Lebanese and Arab community. On Tampa, when Tampa took place, Tampa affair. Mr. Radok was having dinner with the Lebanese and Arabic community leaders, and no one opened the issue, and no one spoke to him about it. So that was a big failure, too. Now, the failure is that they trans translate big news related to community from Australian newspapers or the ABC, because they don't have enough resources to re employ reporters. I remember on one occasion when another newspaper editor who was very close to a federal minister told me, never criticize my friend. I said, I'm going to criticize him. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. And he was angry with me for three months. <laughs> the editor of another newspaper would never allow me to publish an article critical of the local MP because people have to be too good to each other. Good to, he said to me, because people have to be good to each other. I said, I'm good to you. But he is not my friend. I'm not going to be good to him. <laughs> In the end, the friendships with these politicians, but of course, there are politicians. I remember many Australian politicians always talking to them. They tell me, please criticize us. Please tell us what's wrong. Please tell us what we have done wrong. That, were, that are the Australian politicians. 
and the, the news that the paper editors think that differently. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> because they rely on advertisements, newspapers were never critical of issues relati related to the local councils. Mm. There are many issues that affect the Arabic uh, residents in councils, and Arabic newspapers do not raise them because they are friends with the local mayor or the local councillor. And many times I, I said to them, that is wrong, you have to raise them. Because people are dying, people are crossing the road and getting killed on, uh, on the road. Uh, you have to talk about these matters. Uh, now, uh, all right, all right, I heard you. <laughs> one, one and a half minute, all right. Radio programs are heavily directed towards the Lebanese community, with all due respect, of course, the Lebanese community uh, is the largest of Arabic community. But despite the fa this fact, the demography of the community has changed dramatically with the influx of Egyptian, Iraqi, Palestinian, Syrian, and Sudanese. So in, in conclusion, the success was on individual basis by editors or journalists or staff. The Arab Gulf state still contributes to the uh, Arabic newspaper in Sydney. So they cannot uh, uh, um, criticize uh, the Arab Gulf state. They cannot uh, criticize the role played by Qatar in Syria in killing thousands and thousands of people. They cannot do, they cannot do, they cannot do that because the Arab Gulf states are paying money. Uh, the digital age, we're coming to end, the digital age, <laughs> well, as you know, the digital age, I'm not going to go into <laughs> through it more than my <coughs> colleagues have said, if we do not go uh, along the digital age, the newspapers in a few years' time will, will disappear. And uh, they have to take into consideration the demographics of the community. But in total, uh, in conclusion, so far they have done a very good job. Thank you very much. <laughs>